Okay, let's go. Word. Yeah, I got, I got, I punished a lot as a kid because the, the game fight night when I wanted to, you know, when we fought welterweight, I wanted to use Zab Judah. I fought with my brother when I wanted to fight uh, heavyweight. I said, yo, I'm going to fight with Roy Jones. No, no, we throw the control at your face. Boom, you're punished. So it was like, I, it is a legendary moment for me. You feel me? Yeah, it's dope to have two legends on, man. It's dope. It's dope. Yeah, for sure. Oh, dope. For sure. For sure. Uh, so... Let's get into some more boxing talk. Roy, what you think about Crawford and uh, Ismail Matamoff this uh, weekend? If, if he can't really shock Crawford and hurt Crawford early, he's going to be in trouble because Crawford has a lot of things that he can do. You know, it's like I always tell people, y'all got to understand that Crawford ain't pound for pound for no one reason. Crawford is pound for pound because he has a plethora of things that he can do. He can box. He can move. He can offend. He can defend. He can punch hard. He can punch sharp. He can punch fast. He can do a lot of things. So this other guy, he hasn't showed me that much. I haven't seen him fight against nobody to pull out the tools necessary to be the Terrence Crawford. Now, he's bigger than Crawford, which is always a factor. So, yeah, if he can hit Crawford and hurt Crawford, it could be an interesting fight. But if he can't hurt Crawford right away and he let Crawford pick him out, he in trouble. And, yo, listen, so, so the Crawford-Spence fight, me and Roy sat right next to each other. Roy called that whole fight. I'm talking like second to second. He got the best breakdown. The, bro, he he we, we, we were sitting right there ringside. He said, he said, watch this, watch this. Everything he did, he called Roy, it out. I said, oh, my Roy, God. Roy's mind is crazy, man. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. All the interviews, it's crazy. All of them. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> no joke. And the problem with me is, the problem with me is like, to me, this is what's wrong with boxing. We got people talking boxing now on these interviewing, on these commentary for these fights that don't understand boxing. Mm. So now the people can't really understand true boxing because the commentators can't tell you what the hell is going on. Right. So right. how can you tell what a Tank is doing or what a Shakur is doing or what a Haney is doing or what a, anybody is doing because they don't understand? How can they explain it to you? When you had myself, Max, Jim, who could break down everything. Jim could break it down for you from a fan's perspective or get out of me what the fans want to hear. Max could break it down to you from the book's perspective and from knowing everything about the person that he needed to know and, or give me to talk about, about anything he wanted you to explain. Me, I could break it down from what was happening inside the ring. You understand me? And no matter who it was, I could break it down for you. That's why we was the best commentary team. We had a way of breaking any aspect of the game down to you the way you wanted to hear it and, or, or the way you needed to hear it so you could understand what was going on. We don't have that no more. We have people that are just talking because they're paying for them the cheap labor and they're getting cheap commentary. Mm. So nobody's commentating and giving you the real deal because they don't know it. How can they tell you something they don't know? They all say, oh, Roy didn't know. Well, why are we can teach it? Why are we the best? Why are we one of the best at teaching it right now today? We're like an oil field, like a, like a car shop. We're going to go around and fix anything that a person needs to fix anytime he get rid of to. We're going to tell you what's wrong with this guy. We're going to fix that. We're going to tell you what's wrong with that guy. We're going to fix that. Ask Kevin. Kevin, no, uh, Kevin, facts, just living facts, proof. Facts, work can fix facts. it. If I don't need to be fixed, because work knows. There you go. Facts. Mm. There you go. Right. Now, when you when you look at that fight, you know you did say something about if he can't hurt Crawford, it's going to be a problem. But what about the other way around? What about if Crawford? He's Crawford's the one moving up in weight. What about if he can't hurt Matramal? Hit the problem. Hit the problem. Michael might have a good chin, but a person like Crawford, why 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 he, he's so effective is because he does things from a technical standpoint correctly. If you do it from a technical standpoint correctly, it don't matter how much you weigh. It don't matter how much he weigh. When you put them things on him, he's gonna fill them. If you're doing it from a technical standpoint. Now, if you're not doing it from a technical standpoint, that's why a lot of guys move up and lose their power. Because they ain't doing it from a technical standpoint. I went all the way to heavyweight from 154. First person to ever do it. Why? Because I did it from a technical standpoint. The same power I had at 54, I had at heavyweight. It don't matter who, what weight I am. The same power I got, I'm going to carry wherever I go. Because it's from a technical standpoint. Crawford boxes from a technical standpoint. He can hurt anybody anytime. Now, if he don't hurt him in his head early, he'll beat his body and wear him down. Then come back and check his head. That's what the old school fighters used to do. Right, Zach? That's right. That's right. 100%. 100%. Old school. Can't get, like they say, kill the body, the head of that. 
Kill a body. <laughs> hey. That's right. That's right. Now, boy, right. there's nobody that has Madrimov winning this fight besides the promoter, Eddie Hearn. I don't know if he's selling it or what, but who would you want to see Terrence Crawford fight? Canelo or Jerron Ennis more? Well, like, I